a second. Um, any questions for, for Mark? Okay, can we agree the recommendation set out on page 305, please? 318 is a report that presents a number of requested changes to what we previously agreed, which is called City Centre Connectivity 1. Um, Councillor Hackett, you're going to talk us through this report. Thanks, Chair. Uh, this is an important scheme for public and private transport, of course, around the city centre, with £38 million of SIF uh, money already committed. Unfortunately, the worsening condition of the Churchill Way uh, flyovers has put the project at risk. Without the demolition of these flyovers, the various elements of the scheme, of course, cannot be completed and we cannot reap the rewards of better traffic flow. In particular, the project, project itself, an important point, offers 900,000 tonnes of carbon avoided, which is a big, obviously, contribution towards improving our climate and air quality. Resolve this, Chair, our proposal is to modify the project to allow the CA to fund the demolition of the flyovers with 5 million of already committed funds and 1.75 million in new funds. There is no change, Chair, in project benefits or outcomes. I recommend this. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Pat. Any questions for Councillor Hacker? Can we therefore agree the recommendations as it says that was on page 373, please? The aforementioned uh, local industrial strategy, we're going to have an update from Amy Jones, who's the Assistant Director of Policy and Strategic Commissioning. Um, it'll set out the development of that local industrial strategy. This is not about its um, formal publication at this stage, but uh, Aileen, if, um, People want to ask questions, uh, we'll ask them at the end. Thank you, Joe. Um, this presentation really covers three things. Um, it provides an update on the yeah, consultation and engagement that we've done with the local industrial strategy. And from that consultation and engagement, it just provides a quick overview of what matters to people in the city region and what businesses have told us matters to them. And thirdly, it starts to set out the emerging strategic priorities for the final local industrial strategy. In terms of our consultation engagement taken up first, this has been the biggest ever consultation and engagement process that we've run in the combined authority and it provides the foundation of how we want to engage and do engagement in the future. We started off with um, Liverpool City Region lessons in August, which has run until the end of Octo October. This has been our public facing engagement where we've asked the public about a variety of issues, the environment, housing, culture, and, and got them to tell us what they think and what matters to them. We have also, the Liverpool City Region um, lessons activity has involved engaging over 7,500 people in communities across the city region, focusing proactively um, on diversity. As part of that activity, we've also received 2,500 individual online and postcard responses. We've also commissioned our own research, representative research, and that has involved 600 on-street interviews, as well as six focus groups for each local authority area. We've also delivered a series of engagement events um, with trade unions, with the social economy, with the Fairness and Social Justice Board and the Chambers of Commerce across the city region and that has involved over 100 people. We've held our own five policy development workshops and that has involved about 300 people where we've asked people for views on the policy interventions that might be necessary to tackle some of the challenges that we have in the Liverpool city region economy. Um, and we've also um, had individual and ongoing conversations with, with key partners. In terms of moving on to the, the second aspect of the presentation, what has this consultation and engagement told us about what matters to people in the city region and businesses and, and just taking people first? Um, what came out really clearly in our engagement with people and the public is that we have a really great sense of place in the city region and belonging and people feel really rooted in, in their local areas. And it's really important that the local industrial strategy builds on that and builds upon 
a forward-looking identity for the city region that is about, it is a place of innovation and it's a place of progress. Unsurprisingly, jobs progression were the main pull factors keeping places um, in areas and the need to create job market with room for skills of progression for people were really important. The environment is a key issue for people. The quality of their public realm is critical to people's communities and well-being. And they also um, flagged an issue that more could be done about improving energy efficiency. The really key priorities for people moving forward were the economy, jobs, and good quality housing. And those were the areas to be felt in most need of improvement. Just moving on to what mattered to businesses and the key messages that we took from that engagement. The skill gap remains a really key issue. And there's variable engagement between employers and the Liverpool City Region higher education base and colleges and, and schools. There's a potential for significant scaling up in our business and university engagement and innovation. We have amazing research strengths in the city region and amazing assets. But there's a need for these two to speak more together and to connect better and there's huge potential to scale this activity up in the city region. There's, and there's a strong appetite from businesses to increase engagement with Liverpool City Region's research and development. And there's a significant opportunity here to develop the innovation ecosystem and open new markets. The barriers that businesses felt that are holding back their productivity are the quality of space, skills, as I've mentioned before, a big issue for businesses, transport, but also navigating the business support landscape. And then there are nationwide challenges, including access to finance and support for export and allowing our businesses to face international markets. And support for business needs to be focused and integrated. Just moving to the third section of the presentation, what is this, our strategic framework, what is this, all this feedback from the diverse um, stakeholders, the social economy, trade unions, businesses and people, what is that telling us about the immediate, what the emerging um, priorities should be in our final local industrial strategy? This is our strategic framework and we really see five key priorities for us moving forward and they're aligned with what the government have called the five <coughs> foundations of productivity. So people, place, ideas, business environment and infrastructure. Just to talk you through the, the five priorities that fall under each of those, what we need in the city region is people with opportunity to turn their, their passion into prosperity. The people of the city region are our greatest asset. Their creativity, their ingenuity, their solidarity. This, this is a, the, we don't have an economy without the, the brilliance of the people of the city region. But not all people in the city region are able to fulfil their potential and we have deep socio-economic polarisation. So we have a number of challenges and we are starting to think through those policy development workshops how, that we, how we tackle those, those issues. Secondly, we need revitalised and distinctive places. Strong places and strong communities are really important to our prosperity and people's well-being. Um, and the Liverpool city region has a really distinctive sense of place. But we also have a number of significant challenges. We have a housing quality issue, a number of our town centres are in decline, and this has implications for how we are viewed and our, and our reputation and, and image more broadly. Thirdly, we need a dynamic business base that creates opportunities. Businesses are a key driver of growth in the economy and, and job creation but we don't have enough businesses in the city region. We have the lowest business density, the 38 laps in the country. We have too few businesses scaling up and growing, and we don't have enough businesses exporting. Fourthly, and I've touched on this already in terms of the collaboration that is needed between our universities and commercialising our, our research, we need collaboration that turns our research into reality. And as Mark has just touched on, how we can do that through the Manufacturing Technology Centre, that is really a great example of our local industrial strategy and practice. We have leading innovation assets here and we have world leading research and they need to connect and we need to fully use these, these assets. And fifthly, we need to connect all our communities and, and opportunities. 
and infrastructure is key to this. It's an important economic and social enabler. We have a number of key strengths in our, our transport infrastructure, but not all our communities are well connected to amenities and strategic employment centres. Digital connectivity is becoming increasingly important, and we have the right infrastructure here in the Liverpool City region to be at the forefront. But again, we have low levels of, of digital inclusion. These priorities are distinct to the, the Liverpool City region and we must make sure that the way we communicate them back to our communities and our stakeholders and to government and investors is distinct too. Um, we're using our creativity to bring our local industrial strategy to life in a way that does justice to the uniqueness of our place. I'm cutting across it just at the bottom of this slide. We have three, or our own three grand challenges overarching all of this and what I've said on people, place, business environment, infrastructure is our ambition to be the most inclusive economy um, in the UK and two other of our own um, grand challenges. Obviously um, we want to be at the forefront given our innovation assets here in the city region at the forefront of tech for good using those innovation for, for good and um, for example we have real strength in health and life sciences and how can we use that to tackle some of the deep rooted um, poor health outcomes issues that we have in the city region and obviously we want a carbon neutral sustainable um, city region. Just finally in terms of next steps we are currently drafting the, the strategy our focus is on how we translate our evidence and all that we have done to gather views through our engagement and consultation into policy interventions. Um, we will continue to engage with our stakeholders throughout the drafting process and we will have a draft ready by the end of the year. Our ultimate deadline is that set by government and we do need to submit in early 2020 and we would really like to submit our local industrial strategy by the end of March uh, 2020. And I will leave it there for any questions or comments. Any questions, Pastor Paul? Yes, Chair, I think the uh, strategy is really coming on. I just like to ask Danny, there's the climate change and the uh, climate emergency agenda being effectively backed in to the strategy. In short. All right, in short, very much so. I, I touched on the three grand challenges we have. We obviously know we have um, a moral ambition to be zero carbon, net zero carbon by 2040. It is very much forefront of our thought. It is a, a grand challenge that we have set ourselves. It aligns with the, um, obviously, the um, clean growth um, national grand challenge. But also it is a way of really drawing out the distinctiveness of the Liverpool city region. Um, we have amazing assets in the city region around the clean growth agenda, for example our hydrogen production, but also the Mersey and the potential for it to generate clean energy. So it is very much being factored into the, the work that we're doing in the strategy. Thank you. Can I just ask, how will it be different uh, to the economic strategies we've seen in the city region? Thank you. Um, I think it's different in a, in a number of ways. I think it's important to point out that we've been set a different exam question this time around. It, as well as drawn out the distinctiveness of the city region, or, and that is really important to us. This has to speak to the, the national industrial strategy, so it needs to speak to the five foundations of productivity and also the national grand challenges where that is appropriate for, for the city region. So we have been set a different exam question. What I think is really different this time around about our local industrial strategy is how our ambition to be the most inclusive economy in the UK is really at the centre of, of what we're doing. It cuts across people, place, business environment, and we are thinking about our policy interventions in a much more inclusive way. So I think that is one of the distinguishing and, and differences in, in, in this strategy. I also think the approach has been different. As I said at the beginning, this is the most extensive consultation and engagement process that the Combined Authority has run to date. We've taken a very granular approach to our evidence base. I think we've been really clear about what we're good at and, and what we're not good at and what our challenges are. And I think 
government have stressed the importance of being really specific about what is distinctively um, your strengths and I think our evidence base on the granular level that we've gone to and that has allowed us to be much more targeted and, and focused. Thank you. Any other questions? I think just, just to add to uh, what Eileen said, Cam, I, I think it's different to other economic strategies and approaches that we've had previously in as much as we're not trying to claim that we're great at everything. We are specifically trying to um, deep root what we've found from our evidence base in the strategy. So it's only the stuff that we can actually evidence to London, um, to Westminster, that we'll be uh, pushing forward. And hopefully people have teased out that some of those cross cutting themes that uh, have been throughout that uh, presentation by Amy reinforce the context to which today's agenda is being presented. If you have a look at some of the things that we've just agreed to fund, they fit very well and dovetail very nicely into what uh, the overall strategic direction of the listed local industrial strategy is. Um, okay, any, any more questions? Can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 389, please? 15 is our final report, which uh, is an interim Liverpool City Region Air Quality Action Plan, uh, which Liam is going to um, uh, give us a presentation on for our <coughs> delectation. Seriously, thanks for giving me the opportunity to come along uh, this afternoon and bring this forward because I know every single person in this room recognises just how important the air quality issue and agenda is to our city region. And whilst it's not exactly the same thing as the climate emergency we've got to address, actually it is literally two sides of the same coin. A lot of the things that we need to do to address poor air quality are exactly the same things we've got to do to address our climate emergency. Now, air quality, as those historic photos show, is nothing new to our city region. Um, you know, if you look back historically, a lot of our famous buildings were literally black, covered in soot, because most houses had an open fire in, and uh, the vast majority of our industry is based around smokestack industries. That's how it was, that's how it is now. On the face of it, fantastic. The buildings are clean, the air itself looks clear. What's the problem? Well, actually the problem has moved, but it is still very significant and very problematic. We've moved from an era when it was soot-based emissions, uh, that were going up into the sky that we could physically see, the era of peach supers in the 1950s, all the way through now to ones that are more based around nitrogen dioxide and particulates, particularly because of the increase in diesel traffic on our road network. And those challenges around nitrogen oxide, which is particularly nasty stuff, have improved. You know, we should acknowledge the fact that we've come a long way from where we were 30 years ago at the start of the 1990s, but it is still a very significant issue that we've got to address. Put this slide up because I think this is fantastic. It's something that Sadiq Khan uh, has actually got across London at this moment in time, really highlighting the issue. As you can see, it's a baby's bottle with effectively deposits shown up on it if you could see particulates and nitrogen dioxide, dioxide type matter. The reason I think it's important is if you could physically see it like that, I think everyone would recognise just how cute and important this issue is. Not least, actually, when you think about where particulates sit within our atmosphere, a large amount of them tend to be at buggy level. This is an issue, when you think about it, affects our most precious resource, our future generations, but also some of our most vulnerable citizens. And that's why we really, really have to address it. Because being very blunt about it, it is killing people. We know that uh, poor air quality is related to about 700 deaths a year in our city region. And it's not just the traditional respiratory diseases that we know about. New research is demonstrating how it's got an effect on cardiovascular vascular diseases, but also neurological diseases, uh, things along the lines like strokes occurring, but also dementia and other studies. It really is one of those things we've got to significantly address. 
There's a lot that's already been done at a district level. You know, we have 11 air quality management areas across the region, particularly in those most acute locations, and particularly covering the whole of the city council area, being the area where the most activity is going on. But we've always recognised as a combined authority, we need to do even more collectively together. And that's why, genuinely, it's been a privilege to me to be asked to chair the air quality task force uh, that you called for. And I want to put on record my sort of thanks to all of the district colleagues, both councillors and officers, but also those key stakeholders like businesses and other key agencies like health authorities in getting stuck into this agenda. I think for us, there's been a number of things that we wanted to do. First and foremost, we actually wanted to make sure that we pulled together a plan for you that supplemented and supported and went further <coughs> with the great work that is already happening across our six district authorities. We're also really keen to do something that was ambitious and stretching, because if we're going to solve this issue and address it, we've got to be ambitious, but it's got to be practical. It has to be things that, this isn't a document that sits on a shelf and looks nice, it has to be something that we learn. Because at the heart of it, there will be some big behavioural changes we've got to encourage everyone in our city regions to do. For example, moving to a much more sustainable form of transport actively, but also prioritising things like public transport. This is very much an interim plan. We've only been meeting for six months of the original uh, year-long commission that we had, but we wanted to bring something forward to show the progress that we're making. So I'll give you a flavour of some of the things that are in the document. I'm not going to read them all. I'm very, very conscious of, uh, of time. Um, I think some of the things that we think that we can do at a combined authority level, particularly is prioritising active travel. Steve talked earlier about our very significant ambitions of rolling out a really high quality cycle in the walking network. And we recommended we try to complete that within a four year time period. We also know there's huge opportunities of how we can prioritise public transport. The new trains will be a fantastic conduit uh, for that on the Mersey Rail network and utilising the buses devolution powers to their full really gives us a huge opportunity to prioritise and make public transport the first choice. We also know there's ways in which we've got to clean up the whole fleet across the city region, be that buses, but also be that things like taxis and looking at the scrappage scheme for taxis and other vehicles, but particularly looking at the freight sector as well. Things like light goods vehicles, there's a pilot we're looking at for electric vans with Highways England, for example. But we think there's also lots of ways we can be innovative with sort of last mile solutions and urban consolidation. How do we reduce the number of diesel vans and trucks on our road network? The local authority level, some superb stuff already happening, particularly in public information and public events. I think one of the best examples most recently was Car Free Day on Wavertree High Street. One of the things we're recommending is coordinating that activity and doing even more of it right across the city region to really bring this issue alive for residents. One of the things we know has had a huge um, improvement in Liverpool and Sefton are 20 mile an hour zones in residential areas. There's a real appetite to look at could we roll out 20 mile an hour zones across all residential streets within the city region. But also other opportunities in physically greening up our infrastructure, more green walls and more kind of things that introduce more greenery into our environment. But this shouldn't also be seen as a transport plan. And actually when you look at sort of uh, where a lot of emissions are coming from, they're also coming from domestic consumption and industry. And we think there's a huge potential to investigate things like a boiler scrappage scheme. So we can actually reduce domestic emissions, but crucially also use that as a way to address fuel poverty, which genuinely is causing real problems for many of our most vulnerable residents. Obviously, this cannot be delivered by the public sector alone. That would not work. Everyone has got to have their role and play their part in this. And we recognise particularly the role of business, Business has to react to this, business has to clean up its act, but we see this as a huge opportunity for the private sector. We've got some fantastic companies in our region that this is a real great growth opportunity for them as individual companies. But for all other companies, actually there's a huge opportunity, because to put it in very blunt layman's terms, if you reduce the amount of energy you use and thus the amount of emissions that you create, you will save money. There's a direct incentive 
towards your bottom line. We think there's huge potential of how we can partner that message with businesses. Again, we can't do all this just at a city region level. We genuinely need central government and beyond to take this issue much more seriously than they have in the past. There are a number of kind of recommendations on specific things that we would like to look at with national agencies. One I will highlight is the potential to look at speed reductions on the motorway network that permeates the city region. They're doing that really well within Wales. Our good friends in the Welsh Government have reduced some of their speed limits down to 60 miles an hour because of air quality reasons and that's had a very positive impact in the parts of Wales where they've done that. But crucially as well, if we're going to deliver this very significant change, it will take pounds, shillings and pence. And that is where we really need to call upon government to seriously come forward with a significant long-term funding uh, package of how we're going to address a number of these measures. Finally, this is our interim report. This is to give us a flavour. I'm not coming forward on behalf of the task force that we've got all of the answers. We know we've got some good uh, quick wins that we can push towards. We know we've got more work to do. I look forward to coming back within the next six months with something even more detailed that hopefully we can endorse and go forward. More than happy to take any questions. Questions, Gain. Um, yeah, first of all, congratulations to you know, yourself and colleagues. I think this is an excellent report and it's great to see this part of towards the end of the year of the environment to see this really strong plan coming forward and I was amused or saddened to see the reference to smoking up there. And you remember we in the city region played a key role in helping push for the smoking ban nationally. And I hope we as a region can take an equally strong role in pushing really hard on this topic. And I think this is a great plan. And I, I'm reading it through and seeing what you've said. This is still to be refined. And can we assume that, for the, although it's a very full report with a lot of very solid recommendations, there might be even more that people think of and propose, and is there the opportunity to feed those in to the task force before, before the very final plan is produced? Is that right? Absolutely. We do not have a monopoly of wisdom on this issue, so all kind of contributions, thoughts, ideas, and perspectives very, very, very welcome to put them forward. Great. I'm welcoming report, uh, Liam. A um, lot of focus on Liverpool. Um, can you expand on what, what else for the, the rest of the city region? No, absolutely. I think genuinely this is a city region endeavour, and I've been really, really pleased with the enthusiasm that's come from all six districts. And a lot of this is about building on some of the very good work that's already happening. For example, most of the districts are doing some exceptional stuff around. Uh, idling around schools and how we can enforce that and crack down on that. There's also some great work that's been done in a variety of districts around the whole issue of the school run. When we think about the fact that that equates for about 20% of peak time traffic and thus the emissions that that creates, there's a huge potential to learn from some of the best practice that's happening in each of our different districts around, particularly primary schools, there's some really good stuff happening, that we can then use those as suitable pilots to roll out as suggestions for each of the districts across the region. Any further questions? Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks, Liam, for the presentation. That was really good. Um, there's obviously a lot of focus on transport in the, uh, which is really important to kind of tackle this, but obviously housing and industry also uh, contribute to Helen in my borough. We're ambitious for building new affordable quality homes, also attracting investment and growth. Um, how can we address that and make sure it's all tied together? No, absolutely, because one of the things I've as I've mentioned that I'm very, very conscious of, we can't just see this as being a transport issue. If we get everyone on the bus and the train, it's fixed. It's not. Uh, we have to recognise that particularly industry, but particularly domestic consumption, are key to all of that. I mentioned about the kind of boiler scrap bridge uh, element, but there's also huge potential of how we look at our planning guidance across the six districts and really sort of embedding some of the best practice, uh, particularly when we're focusing on new builds, because that's where there's a huge opportunity to actually sort of drive out a lot of energy waste, which then leads to significant amounts of emissions yeah, physically going into our atmosphere. We know one of the things we really do need to do over the next six months is have a much deeper dive into specific industrial sectors. Uh, hinted at some of the kind of ideas we know we've got to look at around the freight logistics industry as one example. Um, and I think one of the other things that we're very conscious of 
is that again the city region is not an island so we need to think about how does this link into what our near neighbours are doing whether they're Cheshire West, Warrington, Lancashire, Greater Manchester because genuinely this is an issue we, more than any other does not respect the lines on maps that we work within so we know there's a lot more that we've got to do over the next six months and get into a much more granular detail than we've even been able to do so far. And we, we will do, make certain that we capture things like um, St. Helens' Glass Futures programme, I mean, that could be hugely beneficial to the air quality in that area. Things that you're doing locally with Caden High Net and 15% of hydrogen being put into the gas mains, and all of those sort of things we will. So this is not the final iteration, this will be something that does grow, but we do want to capture things from across the, uh, the districts as well. Uh, Pat? Just, uh, just to say that we are doing things, of course, as we, as we talked earlier, locally, within our own local authorities. And, uh, uh, but can I say that that's quite an inspiring uh, presentation today, so there's a lot going on, and it's great to see there's a lot of ambition there as, as well. Could I just ask, well, what's, what are this, this, the CA doing themselves? What, in terms of as part of that um, yeah. plan, uh, obviously the way that it breaks down is it's recommended a number of different actions for each of the different partners. So the, the CA, for example, is a lot around how we can uh, maximise the potential of public transport, you know, the developed powers over buses, the brand new trains, uh, things like the active travel agenda that we talked about uh, beforehand. Um, so a lot of this is CA kind of portal, but we also think there's an opportunity to use the conduit of the CA to actually do things a bit more efficiently and save us all a bit of money. So one of the things that uh, we're suggesting is that the CA could, as part of some of the monitoring contracts we already do as a city region, procure a more detailed approach to air quality monitoring so we can actually understand in much more detail actually what the air quality is like right across the piece because there's some really good indications out there we just think we might be able to procure it collectively and save us all a bit more money to get an even more accurate picture. Any further questions? I think what we'll find out is by the time we are ready to publish this, that where the local city region leads, others will follow. We're ahead and many of these issues, and um, just like the, the previous uh, report, um, just to commend the excellent work that's gone into developing these two reports at this stage, this is not the, the final public stage, we can see so a lot of work goes into these things. Uh, thanks William for um, that was um, a, a fantastic presentation. Um, so therefore can we agree the recommendations that are set out on page 395 please? Item 16, there aren't any um, public questions that have been received within the uh, time scales. Item 17, there are no petitions and statements that were received within any time scales. And item 18 uh, is the, the minutes of the transport committee held on 12 September 2019. Um, Liam, anything that we should bring to our attention? No, just as read. Can we confirm the minutes of that meeting then uh, on the 12th of September, please? Um, okay, um, well, just to, to, to round off then, it, it was supposed to be the first day outside the EU, as somebody promised us, and that didn't happen uh, today. Um, but we are, as a command authority, gearing up for whatever comes next, out of the general election or anything else, and we'll continue to ensure that we take the city region forward as a combined authority uh, and if you have a look um, afterwards just reflect back on what we've done today we will see that it's been another fantastic lesson for politicians in Whitehall um, and Westminster that by working together uh, working in collaboration uh, you can achieve genuinely positive results for the many not the few um, with that said the next meeting of the combined authority will take place on Friday the 6th December 2019 at 1 o'clock and I declare the meeting closed.